Understanding how to install LED strip in a professional and creative way can be challenging. Understanding how it works is the first and most important step. We've got various samples laid out here from Robus that illustrate the different types of strip available, starting with the simplest, which is the 12 volt Vega strip. It's also available in 24 volts, and there's even such a thing as mains voltage AC strip, but more on those in future content. Just before we get stuck in, if you're watching this video on any of our social media accounts, then click the link in the description to view it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate as well. If you're already watching it as part of that free training package, then well done, let's crack on. The strip is made up of several layers. Starting at the back is an adhesive layer. This is important as it's how the majority of low voltage strip is fixed in place. As we get into the other layers, you'll see that you can't just tosh a nail through the center of it to hold it in place. The LED strip is actually a printed circuit board or PCB. At the bottom, there's a thin layer of insulation. In the case of this extra low voltage strip, it isn't there to prevent people from touching the copper and receiving a shock. At 12 volts, it simply doesn't have the push to get significant current flowing through a human. Unless you lick it, of course. The insulation is there to prevent the copper conductors from touching each other or shorting out. Speaking of copper conductors, they're the next layer. Now, in the electrical industry, we're used to thinking of conductors as being long, thin cylinders unless you work with large armoured cables or bus bar chambers. But in LED strip, the copper conductors are flat and incredibly thin. In fact, their thickness can be measured in microns. If you look carefully at this Vega strip from Robus, you can make out these rectangular shapes that look embossed on the surface. The larger flat raised areas are the outline of the copper conductors. These are the next layer of the PCB, and the circuit that you can see there is actually etched into place by removing areas of copper after it's been printed on. We'll explain what each part of that is doing and how it's internally connected in a minute. Then there's a top layer of insulation completing the basic structure of the strip. Looking at this top layer though, you'll notice that there's bits of it missing and the copper remains exposed in some places. Remember earlier, we said that this lighting runs on 12 volts direct current, which puts this strip into the extra low voltage category. So even if you did come into contact with that small amount of exposed copper, it's not going to cause you any harm. Of course, the other job of insulation is to stop the copper conductors from touching each other, and it's doing that as there's insulation between the two conductors, and as you wouldn't use this strip in damp environments, it's completely fine to be exposed like that. Then we come to what's on the outside of the strip. Along the surface, you can see there's two different components mounted on here. These are the LEDs, or light emitting diode, the bit that illuminates. You might hear this type being referred to as SMDs, which just stands for surface mounted device. And as its name suggests, it's mounted onto the surface of the LED strip and connected to the copper underneath through holes left in the insulation for that purpose. You might hear manufacturers referring to SMDs with a four digit number. This number is all to do with the physical size of the LED. The first two digits give the length of one side of the LED casing in millimeters, and the second two give the length of the other side. A common size is the 3.5, 2.8 LED. You have to imagine that there's a decimal point between the two numbers in each pair. So this size would measure 3.5 by 2.8 millimeters. The other component that you can see on the strip is this tiny black component. Although this doesn't emit any light, it's every bit as important as the LEDs. When connected up correctly to a voltage source, the internal resistance of an LED becomes really small, meaning that lots of current will flow through it. For an LED, this high current can very quickly lead to burning the LED out. To prevent this from happening, a resistor is wired in series with the LED, and this acts as a current limiter, preventing too much from flowing through the LED and damaging it. But if the LED needs a resistor, why isn't there one for every LED? Well, remaining on the surface of the strip, you'll notice that where the little bare patches of copper are, there's a line with a pair of scissors, and these all repeat at regular intervals. These are the cut points for the strip, and mark the position where the strip can be cut to length. These regular points are set at different lengths for different brands and products. On this Vega strip, they're every 50 millimeters. If you need to cut it a distance that falls between the 50 millimeter cut points, then the solution is don't, it won't work. And at the very least, you'll destroy that section of the strip, if not the whole length. For guidance on how to work within these distances, see a future video in this series. These cut points are part of the reason that there's only one resistor between the three LEDs. Each little section of the strip is like a pre-wired lighting circuit that's ready to go. Running down the outside are the two strips of copper that feed the mini LED circuits, a positive on one side and a negative on the other. Notice that this is a DC circuit. And so keeping that polarity correct is really important when we connect the strip up, but also if we ever need to extend the strip or take it round a corner. More on that in a future video. 
So back to the question of the single resistor for every three LEDs. Looking at each section, you can actually see how they're all connected and that they don't just bridge from one side of the strip to the other. Tracing it out, the first LED connects to the positive rail and then the other side of it goes to this middle section of copper. Following that section, it connects to one side of the next LED and then the other side goes to a completely new piece of copper, which connects to one side of the resistor. The other side of the resistor then connects to one side of the last LED in the strip and the other side of that goes to the negative rail, completing the little mini circuit. If you trace the path the current takes through there, you can see that the current has to pass through each of the components in turn in order to flow, which is pretty much the definition of a series circuit. So that's why we only need that one resistor. It's acting as a current limiter for all three of the LED units because all four components are wired in series with each other. Clever stuff. So that's the makeup of a basic LED strip. If you're watching on our training platform, then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and then move on to the next video. If you're watching on one of our social media channels, then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate. Or you can watch the same video in the series right here to find out why, if LED strip is so simple, there's so many different types. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.